What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Richard on Data. And if this is your first time here, my name is Richard, and this is the channel where we talk about all things data, data science, statistics, and programming. So subscribe for all kinds of content just like this if you haven't already, and hit the notification bell so YouTube notifies you whenever I upload a video. This is going to be the first video in my Julia tutorial series. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through five easy steps. And in those steps, we're going to download the command line version of Julia. Then we're going to get set up using Julia, which is the main integrated development environment for Julia. We're then going to configure Jupyter Notebooks for our Julia kernel. That way, you have an option. You can work with the Atom text editor for a more RStudio or Spider-like integrated development environment experience. Or you can work directly in Jupyter Notebooks. At that point, it'll be entirely up to you. It'll be largely a matter of personal preference. But after this tutorial, you should be completely able to work in whatever environment in Julia you want to. Now, I'm going to be showing you a few pages on the web here, and naturally, the links to all of these will be provided in the description of this video. And this particular page here is all the documentation for Juno. Again, Juno is the integrated development environment for Julia that we're going to be working in. And step number one is the first step that we're going to do here. That's downloading and installing Julia. So if you click on this hyperlink here for the downloads page, it's going to take you to this page on julialang.org. So the current stable release right now at the time I'm recording this video is version 1.5.2. So you're gonna click on either the 64-bit installer or the 32-bit installer over here. Then you're gonna download and install Julia. Step two, now that you've downloaded and installed Julia is, you wanna download and install Atom. So if you click on this link, it's going to take you to the website atom.io where you can hit this download link and it's going to download the installer for you. So just to give a little background on Atom, it's a text editor built by GitHub. Now Juno is an integrated development environment that's built on Atom. So just think of it like Atom provides you the shell, it provides you a text editor, and then Juno is going to sit on top of that and provide you all the Julia specific enhancements which are going to make our life so so easy as you'll see soon here. Step three, now that you've downloaded and installed Atom, go ahead and open Atom up. Then once you do that, it should look something like this. Now there's a few things here which are going to look a little bit different for you because I've already installed Juno on my end. But regardless, you should get the look and feel of this pretty quickly. And for those of you who are R programmers who work in RStudio or Python programmers who work in Spider, Atom should look pretty intuitive and familiar to you. We need to install Juno next, and we're going to do this directly from Atom. So to do that, come up here to File, then go Settings, then go Packages. Then from that point, you want to look up in the search bar, Uber-Juno. Sometimes you need to give it a second here. And it should come up Uber-Juno, the official installer of Juno, the Julia IDE. So you're going to see an install button here, and you're going to hit that. So you want to do that. And after that's done, a couple things you need to look for are look up Julia-Client. You need to make sure that's installed as well. If it's not installed, install it. And then you also want to install this package Inc. Go ahead and install all three of these, then restart Atom. Once you've restarted Atom, you should see this Juno menu item up here. So that gives you a pretty good idea that your installation was successful. Now, one last thing that we want to do before we're able to write Julia code is you want to go up here to Packages, then go to Juno, then come all the way down to Settings. At that point, scroll down just a little bit here, and where it's got Julia Path, just check and make sure that it's got a link to your local Julia installation. I know that this Julia Path is my actual installation. It's got Julia 1.5.2 here. I'm ready to go. So down here in the REPL, I'm going to hit Enter to start Julia. Just give it a moment here to get going. And look at that. It's starting Julia. 
Now that Julia has started up, we're going to test it to make sure it works. And obviously, we're going to start by printing Hello World. Try this. And then, bam, it returns to you Hello World. So you should be able to get to this point, and it should be working for you. Now, Juno is a perfectly wonderful environment for writing Julia code in, but it's absolutely not for everybody. And that's where step four comes in, and that's why we're going to download and install Anaconda. Now, those of you, especially those who are Python programmers who might already have Anaconda set up, just skip this step. But for those of you totally unfamiliar with Anaconda, think of it as one unified platform that has RStudio on it. It has Spider, which is a wonderful Python IDE, as well as these Jupyter frameworks like Jupyter Notebooks and Jupyter Labs. So to set up Anaconda, you're going to go to Anaconda's website, make sure you're on the individual edition. You're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom, and then you're going to select your preferred installer, depending on do you want the 64-bit or the 32-bit, and naturally depending on whether you're on Windows, Mac, or Linux. Once you've got Anaconda installed, go ahead and open up Anaconda Navigator. Just go ahead and open that up, and you're going to get a page that looks just like this. So I'm personally going to be working in Jupyter Notebook here, but it's a very similar procedure to go through for Jupyter Lab. You're going to go over here and you're going to launch Jupyter Notebook. Once you get Jupyter Notebook up and running, you're going to get a page that looks like this. Now what this is doing is, it's pointing to a local drive on your machine. And generally speaking, what we're going to do is, you want to go to New, and then you'll have your specific installation of Julia. Then you can just start that notebook up and do what you need to do using Julia. But on your first time here, we need to link Julia to Jupyter. Now on step five, we're going to go back into Atom here, and we're going to run our first Julia program. So this code is super straightforward. It's obviously going to be on my GitHub, as well as in the description of this video, and it's quite straightforward. In this first line of code, we're doing this pkg.addiJulia thing here. Now think of this as completely analogous to like an install.packages in R, if you're familiar, or a pip install from Python. PKG is the internal package manager in Julia. And then iJulia is just a Julia package. It's the kernel which is going to link Julia into Jupyter. So I'm not going to run this line of code here because I've already done that. Once you've done it once, you don't need to do it again. All I'm going to do is run this using iJulia and notebook part here. Using iJulia is completely analogous to a library statement in R or an import statement from Python. We're just going to run this here. We're going to just bring that package into our environment. And then this notebook statement is going to launch Jupyter. You should get Jupyter Notebook to pop back open here. Now we're going to go to New, and then you should see your Julia 1.5.2 or whatever your specific version is here. We're going to open that up. Then Jupyter Notebook is going to come up here. I'm going to test that same hello world statement here. Type that in here and then run. It's thinking about it. And then bam, it comes back with hello world again. So we're all set up with Julia in Jupyter Notebooks. So this covers getting set up with Julia. So now you can write Julia code from the command line, you can write it inside the Juno integrated development environment, or you can write it inside of Jupyter Notebook or Jupyter Lab. So which one of these environments you decide to use is completely up to you and your individual preferences. But for the remainder of these tutorials, I'm going to be using Jupyter Notebooks. So stay tuned for future tutorials now that you're all set up in Julia. In the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to manipulate a data set. So thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please consider sharing it. Also, please take just half a second to smash the like button because that really does help me out. Then I'll see you all in the not-so-distant future. Until then, Richard on Data.